Yeah, uh, I, I, I was not certain who the worst friend is, Paolo or Sergio. Paolo said, okay, you can speak in Italian. Sergio said, no, you need to speak in English. So the worst friend is Sergio. Uh, to you too. Um, what happens is that we are talking since this morning about uh, complexity, everything has been said, so perhaps I can be short so that you are not obliged to listen to this strange English that I speak. Um, but um, my question is uh, how to uh, deal with complexity is impossible to say and uh, Gigi has demonstrated it in a, in a masterful way um, because one thing that we know is that complexity is not a set of difficult problems uh, because it has no solution uh, it's a mess it's something that we don't know how to deal with unless we create a narrative. Uh, that's why exactly during this time of paradigm shift and everything, um, we are talking so much about the media and the network. One thing that I learned today is that Facebook will die, which is news, uh, and uh, the network will persist. And it's something that I already heard when I was a young student with Fernand Brodel. Fernand Brodel, he was an historian uh, in Paris, and he was assigned to study Philip II, the emperor of Spain and uh, South America and everything. And uh, he said uh, that he could not do a story about Philip II without studying the Mediterranean because the emperor will die, but the Mediterranean will persist. And the major thing to think about uh, in a period of paradigm shift is what will persist and what will pass. And uh, if you live in a period like this, uh, that means that you need to be able to distinguish between what is interesting and what's important which is exactly where uh, our media seem to fail. Uh, because we have so many news from so many sources and the real problem is how to s distinguish, to, to understand what's interesting and what's important. Um, to me, um, the major synthesis of the problem is the following. During this kind of times, uh, the future change and the way we talk about the future changes. Um, and this becomes an existential problem. My father, at my age, he knew that I would be better off than him. Uh, now that I'm father, uh, I don't know if my children will be better off than me. I don't know it because there is no way to know it because there is a narrative failure, a narrative failure. We don't, are not able to tell the story that we are leaving it uh, in a way that has a development that tells us how our children will be better off than, a, than us. 
um, my father lived during the times in which Italy became an industrial country and everything was talking about it. The motorways, the cars, uh, um, you know, plastic and everything and uh, people started to go from the country to the, to the town and in the town you had money, uh, holidays, schools and everything was talking about this progress. And the narrative was clear. Children will be better off than their parents. In a paradigm shift like this one, the first thing that dies is a clear narrative about what will happen and how we will be able to have children that are better off than us. Um, so that's why we are talking so much about the media and what, uh, the, the question is what's important and what's it's interesting in the media discourse. Um, because we're talking a lot about media and there are so many interesting things about the media. Um, but how we understand what's important? Um, well, if you, uh, if you think at what we have just said, Facebook will die, the network will persist. Philip II will die, the Mediterranean will persist. You understand that the long-term thinking the one that goes to the important things, the one that goes to the persistent things. Uh, that kind of thinking is the one that we need to be able to use to understand what's going to happen. And since I'm now uh, studying innovation, uh, I understand that I decided to study innovation because I'm, a, I'm, I'm an historian uh, uh, as education. Because history tells us uh, the way to see what's persistent and what is not. Um, so in the media sector, the major new narrative is the structure of the, of the media. Uh, if we have a narrative failure in terms of stories that we tell, in terms of idea of framing the progress, uh, we need to switch and think about structure of the media. The structure is the narrative, is the new narrative. Uh, we call the structure in different ways. For example, uh, we use the idea of metaphor to say that a structural uh, uh, combination of uh, media instruments and tools become something meaningful. Because a narrative is about meaning. It's about putting to the dot, uh, connecting the dots in a meaningful way. You need a story. But the story that you need when you look at uh, the structure is not a story uh, like uh, uh, a movie. It's a story like a metaphor. A metaphor in uh, our... Uh, in this moment is something that is meaningful in the use of the tools, in the use of the structure. Of course, uh, uh, when you first saw a Macintosh in 1984, the metaphor of the desktop was meaningful and helpful to use the difficult computer. And the, the computer became the computer for the rest of us because of the metaphor. In Facebook, the metaphor is friendship. We use this complex system of computers easily because we understand 
the metaphor of friendship. And uh, what happens now is that uh, um, we are trying to figure out the long-term story uh, that is the story of the structure of the media that is going to be our long-term project to create a new narrative to understand how we will be able again to say how our children will be better off than us. So where is the narrative, the new narrative? Where is the new way to um, find not solutions but stories that we can be authors of? Um, being into uh, such a complex situation in which so many things are interesting and tell, a, tell us many things, um, we live in a period in which uh, the, uh, we, we don't know exactly who we are and uh, where to find um, the way out. Uh, we used to be in a, we use uh, media that are born in the mass uh, media uh, age and the mass media age was about the industrialization. Now we are going towards a new way of being together but we don't have a new word for that. And, and so we sort of think that this information can pollute our uh, understanding of uh, the situation. We, we are sort of confused. Um, I'm trying to find out a new story uh, and I don't have it, but I have a metaphor for a story. What happened with the ecology consciousness. Um, this is the way I would like to sort out of this problem and I would like to uh, suggest a possible new narrative for the structure of the situation in which we are. Um, Fifty years ago ecologists were some freaks that didn't understand what was going on. Uh, they were pioneers of a new culture. They were talking about the externalities of industrialization uh, that were uh, creating uh, some sort of damage to the environment, but they were few. Most people thought that the real thing was to create more goods, uh, create more industries, have growth and be wealthy. At, at the time uh, in which the limits of development came out, it was a completely different discourse that was going on. It was the industrialization discourse. And we were in the mass system. Um, ecology was freak, but people uh, slowly developed an idea of ecology which was new. And in 50 years, those few freaks that were creating this new culture uh, are, are, are now a majority. Everybody feels that the quality of environment is important for our lives. And the process in which these 50 years developed this idea uh, is a pro process in which we pass through different alarms, different dangers. We understood that there was something wrong and then somebody was talking about the new culture of ecology and uh, uh, we understood slowly that we should save the env environment. And then the last step was the consciousness of uh, the fact that my gesture, my action, my individual action means for the environment a lot and 
can help the environment improve. And then the good and the valuable environment will be uh, happiness for me. This kind of uh, circular uh, situation in which my individual gesture has an impact to the global situation and the global situation is important for me, myself, sing individual. This consciousness is the, the moment in which the majority of us understands that ecology is important. This kind of uh, uh, participation, active role of everybody and importance of the general situation and dialogue between the two dimensions is a kind of thinking that is going to be important as a structural basis to create a new narrative even in the media sector, in the economy sector, and maybe in political sector. We need to recreate the relationship between the individual action, the wealth of everybody, and the individual advantage. We did that in 50 years in ecology, we probably, I hope, we will be faster in other dimensions uh, because the, at least in the media sector we are helped by the structure of the media that we are using, which is the internet, which is very similar to the environment. It's a complex system, it's becoming more and more embedded in the environment. We will understand the internet and the environment together uh, as a single complex system in which our individual action will matter for the whole and the whole and the wealth of the whole will matter for us as individuals so that we could understand the situation as we understand the situation in, in, in the ecosystem. That's why we are using so many metaphors like ecosystem to talk about innovation and other matters that uh, seem are like uh, the ecosystem. It's a metaphor, but it's a metaphor that is related to the whole uh, media sphere in which we live which is the real narrative that is emerging from the complex situation in which we are. Um, and if we take that metaphor uh, to the deeper level, it, it's also a way to understand how this new narrative could have a happy ending. Thank you.